Okay, that should work better. Heather, we're good to get going. Over. So this is, uh, the intent is, is that we're walking you through uh, essentially a four-class series um, over, over a, a day and a half. So Carl and I, when we designed this uh, the track, if you will, the idea was we'd start with the, uh, the conversation this morning about what do I do now, and, and then um, I was going to share uh, some guidance on what I saw from the worldwide tour and let that kind of spawn into a, a, a conversation again, um, a peer-driven conversation where uh, hopefully Carl and I don't do all the talking and, and you guys participate, again, kind of recreating Indianapolis where uh, we just sat around and talked about Small Business Server. And, and so that's the intent of this session. Um, it's intended to kind of be a, a peer dialogue, if you will, and um, have your participation and input about what's working and what's not. Then tomorrow, uh, we have uh, people that Carl's worked with uh, going through a focus group and advisory group process um, in the morning. So we kind of go through that motion. And then later on, we bring it all together uh, with a fourth class, like a capstone course, where we can talk about what, what did we learn the last three days, what questions do you have, et cetera. So we'll kind of facilitate that dialogue. So that was kind of uh, what we're thinking this afternoon, and then we get back to the uh, the exhibit hall and the happy hour. So, um, and, and by the way, I see there's a couple of vendors in the room. So I'm going to want to engage with you guys about what you're hearing from your partners is best practices. Again, I have my own biases, and Carl can speak towards his biases. Um, but my uh, my bias is uh, when you hear those ads on NPR um, Morning Edition are all things considered in the afternoon. And they say it's sort of that NPR kind of uh, sleepy voice. <laughs> the, uh, the following was underwritten by the executive MBA program at the University of Washington. And that's what I feel we're trying to recreate here because you're uh, senior professionals. You're deep into your career. Um, it would be ridiculous on the business side to try and facilitate a conversation that's uh, sort of a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And, and I'll, I'll tell you, how we, we, we tried that um, on the world tour, and it didn't, it didn't go very well. So uh, with that said, before we get to the next slide, um, of course, thank you for attending. Uh, it's been a good show, so we appreciate that. A lot of energy, a lot of new people. Um, by introduction, uh, Harry Brelsford, I've had the chance to essentially meet you. Carl, sir, introduce yourself. <laughs> thank you. So uh, I'm not sure how many people were here in this morning session, but uh, many of you were. But I'll repeat it for those of you who weren't. Uh, I owned a managed service business for many, many years, about 15 years, sold it, uh, went to work coaching with them for another three years, and then we, the business got sold again, and so I went off and started yet another MSP starting this year. Uh, and I've also written 15 books and worked with Harry on many, many conferences, <laughs> many events, and I'm very grateful to be here. And then, like I say, we'll call on some others in the audience. I see, I see GoDaddy, I see Skykick, I see the Microsoft Princess. So, uh, um, Larry, you're the spokesperson in some of Robin's ads, so I'm going to pick on you a little bit. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, that's great, because you, you in a sense, can be uh, the voice of what Robin is, is accomplishing. And I think that weaves into the fabric of, of what's working at a, at, a, at a worldwide level. So um, let's jump into that. So it's kind of the unconference for um, and that's, uh, I, 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 I guess I'll take a second to kind of set the table on what we did from roughly, uh, the, well, the first six months of the year. So uh, a team, uh, myself, um, Sharon Fry and Jay Weiss were a team that uh, hit 30 countries for Microsoft. It's funded by uh, Microsoft OEM. They had devices for every attendee. It was funded by the Windows 8 group over in Building 37. Is funded by SMSMP over here in 121. Uh, 121 is that way. Um, people ask how big is the campus. I think it's literally 150 buildings. I mean, I think I have seen numbers up to about 150. Um, and it was also funded by uh, uh, the oh, Office 365. And then we had a tip of the hat to the XP migration story. Now, what I can tell you is, uh, so we hit the road and. The format was, was lovely. It was the top 15 resellers per country. So it's completely opposite of the tours I did in the middle uh, decade and the mid-2000s where 
we went around and talked about SBS for a couple years, and then we came back around and did exam cram. Some of you know Beatrice, who used to work with me, and we did exam cram for the uh, 7282 exam worldwide. And that, that situation was the more the merrier. And you've done some tours. You did the Intel Hybrid Cloud Server Tour. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it was the, the more in the room, the merrier, right? <laughs> and we did the first uh, 70-282 exam training ourselves. Yep, yep. And, and so uh, this format was the top 15 resellers on a spreadsheet uh, per country, so just based on volume. Well, first of all, and I understand what they were doing. They wanted, if, if you will, they wanted quality, not quantity. That was, that was kind of their mindset. Now, I, I kind of beg to differ because I think there's a lot of diamonds in the rough out there. So I, I, I beg to differ with the spreadsheet jockeys on, on that point. But that was the format. Um, so they brought them into a capital city. So like Istanbul, Turkey, they brought everybody in in Turkey who was a top reseller and so on. Well, what we saw from that is, is, a, is a whole other crowd, okay, the top 15. I mean, you, you had some people that might represent uh, Joe Moore over at uh, Center for Computing Resources. You're up to 54 employees. Um, is Raj in here? Raj, uh, she has about 400 employees as a system integrator here in Redmond. So you saw some of those. And, but, Carl, what was weird is you saw some really big firms, uh, more like Raj in the SI area, um, serving hospitals and that kind of thing, who had a practice in the SMB, but in, like in, in Ireland, this one firm was bigger than the Microsoft Ireland subsidiary. Okay, they're bigger than Microsoft. <laughs> um, so it wasn't quite our traditional SMB nation crowd. And, and so one of the things I'd be upfront about was the cultural mismatch. I, I'm always a little concerned when you have enterprise entities from the enterprise culture trying to sell down into SMB. Um, it's, it's the old saying, why does, uh, why does the Boeing uh, company use Perkins Coie, a huge law firm? Big companies like big companies, right? They, they do business that way. And, and we're small company. We, you yourself are a small business serving small business, uh, businesses. So there's a cultural match. And so that was one learning from the tour was you had um, a little bit of a mismatch with, with some of the Fed. You also had uh, what I would call LARS. So you're familiar with CDW in uh, PC Zone and some of the others. So you had LARS uh, at my event, and that's a very different sales motion. It's okay. It's okay to be CDW, right? But that's a different sales motion than being an MSP, let me tell you. Um, so that, that was kind of... Uh, that's kind of interesting right off the bat. And then our one of the early lessons learned, um, well, I hope, I'm assuming this is clean. Or, sure. uh, okay, maybe I thought I might be following up from somebody last hour with the. <laughs> no, Heather filled that with fresh vodka just for you. Yeah. I just make a point at bars. I never, you know, finish half a drink from someone else or something. I'm willing to buy my own. So um, <laughs> where, where was I? Uh, uh, the lessons learned. Um, so we started the tour, uh, and Ben, who you've now met, Ben Gower, who's now returned back to the UK, but that's one of my examples and one of the photos of numero uno. Um, ben, unfortunately, Ben was one of the early cities, and I left Microsoft Redmond with a 98-slide deck in a four-hour format, and Carl, it was, it was agony. I mean, first of all, think about it. If you're the top reseller in the UK, if not the world, the top 15 resellers in the UK, do you really want some uh, canned slides that say Windows 8 reimagined? Okay, you know, and, and I, I, I was doing my day job. Um, so we were literally doing content revisions weekly. Well, I'm on the road, right, I'm, I'm, I'm overseas for quite some time, so I'm kind of working on the weekends revising the deck. So where we landed, that's where we started. Where we landed six months later, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still pushing these teams that we should continue this uh, motion, is we ended up kind of being almost like peer groups. So we said, okay, here's 15 people, and in the U.S., that's called HDG, right? 15 people in a room. Right. Now, the only issue is we had a geographic competition, so there's a little bit of an issue there that these guys compete with each other. Right, so and they only share. Level, they really do compete. With, yeah, they, like, yeah they, Alan and I can be in the same room, and we don't kill each other. Right, right, exactly. So. 
so, so we had, and, and then, you know, Turkey has a long history and world history about being between the Christian and the Muslim and the Europe and the Middle East. I mean, that, so they, I mean, they really compete <laughs> in Turkey. So there were limits in terms of the sharing, but you see what we tried to do is we took the four hours. I, I, I had to go through the deck in hour number one, okay, had to, had to do my day job. But then we had a case study. I wrote a case study on a bicycle company. And so we broke up into groups of three or four, just like you would in grad school. And they went off for 20 minutes. And then they came back and presented their case study and their findings. And, and, and quite frankly, it was a simple case study. I mean, it wasn't like a Harvard Business Review case study because we didn't have time. It was a, winter, a fat tire bike company that makes winter bikes in Crested Butte, Colorado. They answer the question. They get rid of XP and SBS. And they go to 0365 is, is kind of what the answer was. That's where we ended up, and through that, all that was, and again, if, if you want to take some best of breed practices and facilitation as you work with customers and have an educational sales dialogue, all that really was was a, uh, a fire starter. That, that was just to get the conversation um, going. So in the same vein, what I thought I would do, if I can do this, gang, so bear with me, uh, the, the, the deck I lost was the the picture deck, but I have the picture, so I'm going to try slideshow mode and tell you uh, a little antidote from the cities that um, I personally went to. So let's see how we can do this, because I think I can go to actual size, but doesn't that put it in slideshow mode? Yeah. Okay. So let's I'll, I'll do manual so it doesn't outpace me. Um, so this was actually the first city in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, uh, love Brazil, but don't don't love the uh, the security risk. Very dangerous place. So you can't really leave your Western hotel. Hotel six hundred dollars a night. Um, what they're confronting here are uh, a couple of things in in terms of their challenges. Um, and and uh, one would be piracy. Okay, so. That what they're competing with on, on Windows 8 and devices, and the whole campaign was called Get Modern, what they're competing with is, is piracy, because the clients are saying, yeah, <laughs> why? why? Why would I leave something that's working XP or before that's working that I didn't have to pay for, and now you're putting me in a subscription model that's essentially bulletproof, right? Um, I did a blog in 0365 essentially eliminating piracy because it's a service. Um, and so that was the challenge they had. They had a challenge with the traffic getting to the event and so on. But the people that were doing well were, again, more at the LAR level. Okay, So this audience wasn't really uh, what I would call the SMB IT pro or practitioner. These were people that had call centers calling out and, and selling devices. Uh, they, had a, they had a very different sales motion. And this was kind of a consistent theme. Now, what I can tell you is, uh, starting with Brazil and in every country but America, um, they don't have a resentment about small business server. There may be a little in Australia, maybe a little bit of a conversation in New Zealand, and maybe a little in the UK. But places like Brazil, um, they're just they're, they're they're not stuck. And so what I came to conclude, and Carl, I'm probably overemphasizing it in my keynote in the last couple of days. You know, it's probably my therapeutic issue, so I need to go see Grady Gray next week, my therapist. Okay, I gotta go see him next week and get through this, Carl. <laughs> Maybe it's me, it's not them. But it seems to be a uniquely American uh, phenomena that, that the user groups and, and people who are kind of stuck with the uh, the removal of SBS, these people have uh, have moved on just fine. So that was Brazil. Um, this was South Africa, so uh, the guy in red, what I want to highlight, his best practice, um, Matthias uh, is a longtime uh, SMB Nation member. He's been to our events. Um, this is down in uh, Cape Town. And uh, what he's done is uh, developed a framework that he gives away for free. Um, I wish I could think of his uh, company name on the fly. I'll, I'll see if I can't look that up once we get the dialogue going. But um, he has a framework uh, document, a framework system that he's developed for customers that he, he gives it away. I said, why are you giving it away? That seems, I mean, you've added real value. 
and his idea was to what's the uh, the Hebrew proverb of what give the milk away for free and sell the cow or you, basically free right, right. <laughs> premium yeah basically a freemium concept um, and so uh, I, I will get I will look that up by the way um, while we're chit chatting and then who's that on the far right not not me who am I hiding behind Jennifer Hallmark so uh, you know we're coming out of the recession Lord knows Jenny's put in some long days and and weekends and nights so we, we we made sure that she got to go to one city and on the 30 countries and and it was South Africa so you don't hide well behind me Jenny. no no look at that look at that it's not working out super well um, this is Dubai in the Middle East so uh, this was very interesting now I I like the heat uh, you know, it's kind of like Alaska with sand and heat. It's just the opposite of snow and cold. It's just it's, it's just a one instead of can instead of caribou, they have camels. <laughs> um, what they're doing here, this is actually a very uh, sophisticated economy. Um, it has money. It, it it's actually used someplace you might consider going, and that was one of the practices I wanted to impart on you. What's one of the oldest tricks as a senior professional for an American? In a, in a secular industry, let's take oil and gas. You're in oil and gas, and you want to rise to the top. What's one of the oldest tricks in the book? It's called becoming an expat. You go to a tour of duty in Venezuela or Dubai. So you work for ExxonMobil, and you go do your tour of duty overseas, so you get international experience, and you come back as an executive in, in Houston for ExxonMobil. And, and I'm serious. I, 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 I would encourage, it's one of the best practices, I would encourage you to think about it. Um, and when I say migration, it's not the sky kick migration. I'm literally talking about animals in the savanna that migrate to where there's more water, okay? <laughs> yeah, the original migration tool. Um, guys, you might, you might do, I mean, it is a global economy. You might think about going overseas where as an expat, first of all, you typically get a driver, you get a maid, and you get someone to cook your food and do your laundry. It's a really nice life. Um, you shouldn't take that off the table, whatever that means, right? If it, if, if, but if you have to relocate, you have to relocate. That, I think, is a problem for a lot of people. Um, in Dubai, uh, the big opportunities coming out of this were selling into government. Okay, so that's a sales practice I'd like to impart upon you. One of our sponsors was Action Tech with the wireless display. Uh, device and they landed like the Dubai Ministry of Education from this workshop. One of the MSPs here sold in to the Ministry of Education and, and it was nice. a big it's a big win. Uh, Ireland, uh, what 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 can I say about Ireland? Um, <laughs> the uh, uh, Ireland's a, he a heck of a lot of fun. Um, again, basically this. What, I guess what I want to show you from this photo is this again was an early city and it didn't go well. It, it, it didn't go well because I walked in doing my day job. No, the Irish are nice people. It's just I came in with a 98 slide deck and tried to tell the suit and ties how to sell. And, and, and first of all, I'm an American. You know, they, there, there was already a little, and they, they like Americans, right? But there's already a little bit of a challenge coming in and telling them from Redmond how to sell. And especially when they're the top resellers in Ireland, and again, in a couple of cases, bigger than, than Microsoft itself. So that's the challenge I had. Um, but the sales motion these people have, again, is, is much more along the lines of a distributor or a LAR. Uh, there's Jay Weiss, uh, not one of my cities. That's uh, Jay Weiss in Hong Kong. Turkey. Let's talk about Turkey. Um, so the problem with Turkey is... Uh, regulatory and I don't think we really I don't think you guys are hitting that as much here but they have a, a, a real restriction on the uh, importation of devices into the country so when I landed they searched me uh, the little red Lenovo suitcase you've seen me carry around and they searched me they thought I was smuggling devices in <laughs> and wow. going to sell them <laughs> and that's their challenge is, is we're doing a devices tour right what's Microsoft supposed to be a services and devices company, so we're doing a devices tour, uh, tour and they have limitations, literally uh, customs related limitations on getting devices in. Um, Johannesburg, South Africa, uh, God bless them, 
tough climate. I'm, I'm telling you guys, the, uh, the violence uh, in, in South Africa, tough, tough place to do business. Um, uh, nice place to visit. Uh, Jay Weiss in, uh, this should be Singapore. Um, Kuala Lumpur. Jay, or Kuala Lumpur, thank you. And Spain. Challenge in Spain is uh, uh, significant unemployment. Um, they, they really took it in the economic reset. So they have a challenge in terms of uh, being successful and, I mean, you think we took it hard, but Spain has uh, over 20% unemployment, uh, a banking industry in shambles. Great place to buy a second home, though, let me tell you, if you have cash. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Although I use my yellow phone, um, Sweden, uh, basically, uh, uh, same kind of demographic. What was interesting about this, I'll highlight, you know, and I'm almost through the points I want to make before we kind of get into the facilitation. Um, what was interesting in Sweden is half that audience were uh, telecoms. Okay, so what um, you need to think about is you discover the best practices or mimic the best practices in the world is uh, how the telecoms behave. Um, they got it down. The, the, the sales agent model and the way they behave, that's what they do is they sell, and I've had some good conversations with MSPs in the U.S. Uh, and, and, and maybe I can draw it out of a couple of you guys, but do, do you think you're starting to compete against CenturyLink? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe it was you. Someone I had an animated conversation with, but, but that's absolutely uh, a competitive threat with Office 365 and cloud and the way they're trying to bundle it. Um, CenturyLink uh, sponsored us. Um, we did some work for them over on the bandwidth side. But more importantly, they have that subsidiary, uh, Savitz, Savitz um, and they, they've been at our show. Um, and, and in fact, one of their former employees came by today. He's at the show in a different role now. But that's what we saw in, uh, in, in, in Sweden, Mexico City, uh, Canada. Okay, so the cool thing about Canada, this is Montreal, and we also had Toronto. I think you have that, and starting to run out of slides. Um, the cool thing about Canada was, well, they kind of speak like us, and their culture is pretty close. But more importantly, um, their economy is just frickin' healthy. I mean, just impressive. When I went to Montreal and Toronto, it's like, they're kind of like, what recession? What are you talking about, what recession? And it just shows. Um, I had it reiterated recently. I did the d show up in uh, Toronto a couple weeks ago, and, and it was rocking. And I said, why is your show rocking? And he said, it's the economy, stupid. Events are a luxury good, and they do very well when the economy is healthy, and they don't do as well when the economy is not healthy. It's very simple, because the resellers were uh, animated. Um, and and uh, it's, it's a good show. Um, there's Jay. That should be Singapore. Uh, Sydney, Robert Crane. So what's interesting, Carl, with uh, maybe we, is Robert presenting this hour? I think we may be head to head with Robert, yeah. Okay, well, we'll, we'll get him on the rebound. Um, what's interesting, Robert has a lot of wisdom into the insights of this, but what's interesting is in the SBS era on a per capita basis, you may recall how much we talked about Australia back in the day with Wayne Small and uh, uh, oh, Dean Calvert and the guys up in the Gold Coast, um, Stuart uh, Apple, Appleton? Applegate. Applegate. Um, but they led the world on a per capita. Hey, wait a minute. There's a Canadian in the room. Wait a minute. <laughs> How's your economy doing? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Australia led the world on a per capita basis. Taipei, Taiwan. Um, this is my example of, uh, I, I would offer, and I mean this in a sincere and kind way, but unemotional, unemotional selling. Now, these are fine people. They're great people. Had fun with them. But not, um, I'm going to say in a kind of way, not emotionally involved the way I think we all got emotionally involved with Macintosh and SBS and that kind of thing. This, th th this I'm going to offer their business models more akin to a sales engine, very uh, high-speed trading. 
I, I guess would be words that come to mind, high volume, high speed trading, um, lower margins. Is part of that because they don't look at other things like they don't see Google Apps as competition, for example? I, I don't know about that. I, I, I don't know about that, but I, I would say, Carl, that what I saw was more of the uh, sort of the system builder, retailer, uh, merchant mentality and not as much of the um, white collar management consulting mentality. So I wasn't having those conversations that they're going to go in and bill a bunch of hours to do discovery and planning and all that. It was more, um, it, it, it was more again, for lack of a better word, high speed trading. Uh, there's, there's Toronto. We already talked about Toronto. There's Jay, and that might be Hong Kong. And Manila yep. is right at the top. Oh, oh, oh! Wow, I should read my own slides from Jay. Well, <laughs> well, I wasn't there. I wasn't there. So how many and slides then, can Harry guess? Uh, Auckland, New Zealand. Um, so Auckland, New Zealand's a lot like Ireland. That it's a very small country, relatively speaking, to the UK, relatively speaking to Australia. So they have the same symbiotic relationship to their neighbors. Um, but uh, some of the top resellers. Now, Carl, what was interesting is a complete turn in the audience. So Auckland, again, used to be a hot spot on the tours as well as Sydney. Now, you're go speaking of which, you make your pitch. You're doing a four city in Australia. We're doing a four in city tour, um, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, and uh, Auckland. In, in oh, November. you are doing Auckland. Yeah, in November. So. Mm -hmm. Nice time of year. Um, this was primarily distributors and LARS. Okay, so that's again, just to consider operations, you pivot to a cloud model where you, you might get away from the MSP thinking. And then finally, uh, uh, finally uh, the, the, the UK itself, I'm looking for Ben, is that him in the back row? I think that's Ben in the back row. Um, and, and I would offer in the UK, it was more of a uh, MSP, more of a management consulting mentality and, and less of a, uh, and, and, and less of the R and distributor model. So that probably gets us through uh, the bulk of the tour and some observations I've had on worldwide. So, sir, I've done all the talking. If you want to uh, <laughs> pass that talking stick. All righty. <laughs> so I wanted to first ask uh, of the folks who are here, how many are actively selling Office 365, pushing it to folks? All right. So that's, that's maybe 60%, 70%. And how many of you are finding it that it's successful, that, that it's a, you know, a big mover for you? One, two, three, five, okay. Hosted exchange. So you're saying just hosted exchange. So I'd like some comments from the folks who didn't raise their hand the second time. What is not working about it? Who wants the talking stick? Why well, you got to come get it? I'm not that energetic. So why are you selling just the host exchange? Well, and I could bring my colleague Brett into this. Um, you know, when clients do the math, and even on a visceral level, just having software installed, having a license um, versus paying, um, you know, a monthly fee, um, you know, for a bunch of apps, you know, some they they're not even going to use. Um, you know, he just had a situation where he offered it to the client, did the pitch, and you know, the client said, "Now nah, we'll, we'll buy the OEM version and put it on." So, you know, it comes down to, you know, so they, it's they do versus capex. Yeah, and you know, I mean, they didn't care about the, you know, five devices or, or that kind. You know, that wasn't important to them. So, so that, you know, and that's what I see is the gap as well. You know, I mean, if you do the math. Um, so you don't buy it. You're not sold, so it's hard for you to sell. Sure, you could say that. Right. Yep. Is that true for other folks as well? Is that why you're not selling? Now you've got to bring the microphone all the way up to him. I'll work the mic for a little while. <laughs> I'll work the floor. Thank you. And we have to do this. We have the online audience. So this is how the online audience. So first, tell us where you're from. I'm Max from Greenland. Greenland, um, okay. Yeah. And um, actually, I've evaluated the product over several years, and also I'm, I'm have the primarily small 
business customers and they do the math the same way as in Canada. They look on an OEM license contract, getting a hosted exchange mailbox. So even with the other add-ons, is it that they don't care about the add-ons or they, they, they think they're buying Word and Excel and PowerPoint? Yes. Exactly. Yeah, we saw that worldwide. We saw, I, I would have a software that was branding confusion, right, in terms of what it, wait a minute, Office, Word, <laughs> PowerPoint, Office. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. think it, there needs to be other branding from Microsoft calling it something other No, than I hope not. I just printed a bunch of shirts and <laughs> got the trademark in the domain. I, all hope, the I hope they don't rebrand. <laughs> Ask Windows NT Magazine how well that went. <laughs> but but I, I know what you're saying. Go ahead. Another way we didn't push for Office 365 was it, it primarily the side of what we heard today. We were giving the customer to Microsoft. We're just handing over the customer and get a five, six percent overhead back, and that was it. Microsoft could do with the customer whatever it wanted afterwards. So, are you selling something else, or are you just selling the OEM I'm version of something Office? Something else from yeah, a Canadian company, uh, or hosted exchange mailboxes. So again, just the exchange component. Currently, yes. And then doing OEM for the Office component. Yes. All right. You have somebody Let's behind see. you. And Bob will always there you take care Go ahead. Uh, same thing here. My clients just don't like the uh, monthly, the monthly plan. They're, you know, they'll buy a Starbucks coffee every day, but they're not going to buy five copies of Office 365. So I have to ask you this yep. because I hear this all the time. Did you have both sides of that conversation, or did you actually talk to your clients and ask them, you know, what what they will and will not buy? Because a lot of us say, oh, oh, my clients wouldn't do that. My clients wouldn't find a contract. My clients wouldn't. You know. No, I, I did. She decided to go with some third-party weirdo that's hosting IMAP out of his garage. So. <laughs> yeah, and one of, the, yeah. one of the, I, I guess where I stand value is uh, on, on tour. So this is bringing back some memories. Yeah. Um, but on tour, we had some conversations that, so there was, you may remember Jerome Stewart on the SBS team, and, yeah. and he had a deck years ago called Sales Excitement, and part of it was the coffee shop. So it was exactly that. For less than a, a latte a day, you could have small business server on the That's what I explained. That, that was the whole pitch. And um, I, I, I kind of elevated it to the next level in some of my travels and conversations was, why is it um, you'll do anything? to keep your uh, mobile phone going at 100 a month, you'll do anything to keep that direct TV or Comcast right. cable. You ain't turning that off. But and and well, you're fighting me over $20 a month on E3. Exactly. I mean, really? Yeah. That, well, that's exactly how I responded. <laughs> so. Right. Ahead. By, by the way, you might introduce yourself, because for the audience, you, you're, you're one of the larger resellers active in HTG peer groups. I, I pre Digital Seattle, I appreciate yeah, you coming. Yeah, uh, Digital Seattle. We're a ma uh, managed service provider. And uh, <clears throat> Seattle is a big uh, place to sell uh, Office 365. It's kind of natural. A lot of people know about Microsoft. So it's a different, I believe it's a different market than m m other places in, in the country. And uh, uh, the acceptance of uh, Office 365 is a lot higher here, and people kind of, uh, you don't need to con convince them very much. The problem here is that if you're MSP, you usually you're, you have a very, you're very heavily loaded from a, um, um, kind of a cost of the labor cost. And in our case, we have people making $80,000 salaries. So, you cannot sell Microsoft 365 and uh, use this uh, this type of uh, employees. So I was almost reached the conclusion that I have to split my company and create a separate division that will be dealing with uh, Office 365. And uh, this is a different mindset, different marketing, different approach. Uh, it's, it's a great product. <clears throat> I personally believe it has a great opportunity and will sell. Uh, if we don't want to sell it, it's a personal matter, but Microsoft is here to stay. And, and the question is, can we make it profitable or not? And we obviously need a different approach. And that's the most important for me. Yeah. And, and by the way, thanks for coming. I mean, that's, that's great. I'm certainly familiar with your company, so I appreciate it. Um, 
I had a conversation with one of you over the last couple of days. Uh, maybe you're in the room, so so if I'm starting to tell lies, correct me. But it amounted to you told me I'm going to go back and fire everybody. I'm I'm just going to go fire my whole staff because they're stuck and they're overpaid, and I got to go re. I just got to start over. If I'm going to do Office 365, I just got to start over with a whole new staff um, and get away from the, sort of the upper five-figure, lower six-figure MC SE mentality and so on because it's a different motion. Um, I thought that was a little brutal, but uh, <laughs> no, it, in some ways throw the baby little, out. It is a little brutal, but uh, uh, Ben's story uh, started with um, you know kind of a standard MSP model and started selling the office and realized he needed a certain kind of person to sell that that was going to you know not want to become the superstar technician that that didn't you know want to go down that path to make their riches. They wanted to go down the path of making commissions to make their riches, and so you know it's a it's a different uh, mindset, and it's a younger crowd for the most part. So it you know sometimes we have to retool, and one of the big questions that we always ask is, what do you do on Monday, which is part of our talk tomorrow? But you know how how can you make this part of your business? Because Microsoft isn't going to wake up tomorrow and say, you know what, let's just start pressing CDs again, and we'll ship those. Well, out here. That is yeah, although well, I. I'd say Microsoft recently woke up and say, let's just fire them all <laughs> and start over. Right. <laughs> had, a, had a couple friends caught up in that, let me tell you. <laughs> um, so let me hear, I don't know, GoDaddy, do you have some observations on what's working out there? Is that in your realm to talk about what people are doing successfully with 365? Is that your department? or? Okay. And we used to work small business server days. We used to work together back at Microsoft. So uh, I'm Gordon Leatherdow. I was the group program manager for Small Business Server in the last version uh, that was shipped. So you're all familiar and probably are running my old product. Um, I'm now working for GoDaddy and in charge of doing migrations to Office 365. And we have been selling Office 365 very successfully since January as a reseller. And we have been you know, partnered with Microsoft. And really, the thing that's worked for us is simplicity. Right. We have the most simple sign up. We make it completely brain dead for our customers to who have a domain to come sign up and enter. The minimum amount of information is necessary to get onto Open 365. We hide all of the complexity from our customers, who are a little different, I think, than the customers that many uh, people serve here, because we most of our customers, majority, are one to five seats. Right. So a little different market, but simplicity is what's been selling, and a simplest, a very simple message, which is office. So right? where do, since you're at this conference, where do these resellers fit into your ecosystem? Well, um, right now we're looking at spinning up our Office 365 reseller program. Okay. So that's part of why I'm here, is to figure out the needs of this audience and how we can help facilitate that in the Office 365 sales motion. Well, simplicity speaks to me on Office 365. <laughs> I think there's a lot of confusion with folks about um, not just what to sell, but you know, how do we get it deployed, and do I have to create a 1,000 uh, fake email addresses in order to register every product? You know, There's a lot of that kind of confusion that has stopped people in their tracks who said, OK, until this gets simpler, I'm going to just go back to selling licenses. Uh, yes, sir. If you could pass the Todd, if you could pass the bike over. There we go. I'm Randy Spangler from yes, Chester, sir. Virginia. Um, I, I think part of it is, at least with us, is we were so invested, small I, in small business server, and our clients were. Because if you think about it, email was essentially free on SBS. I mean, it was probably the greatest product pack could you ever developed in the history of mankind. I mean, seriously. I mean, it was the <laughs> best deal going for 14 years or whatever it was. <laughs> you couldn't beat it with a stick. And, and we, I think a lot of us in here built our business on SBS. And more more of the built our business on SBS. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> now we're going from a product that's essentially free to one where they just chopped its head off. And now we're trying to sell a product that goes anywhere from 6 or $7 to 20 Okay. So, I, you know. It's all about perception, right? I mean, it's essentially free after you buy a $5,000 server, do a $5,000 migration, do $350 a month for maintenance for three years, 
Yep, it's free, but you get the email for no extra charge. No, but you know what I mean? No, no, no. I, I hear that, but the point is, is that most of that you had, unless you're going completely cloud, you've got all that infrastructure already. And Exchange rarely broke. So it's not like we were spending, you know, 40 man hours a month just keeping Exchange running. So we had to put the server out already. We had to get the computers on already. All that was done, Exchange was just there. So I'm saying from a cost from a cost factor for clients, if you move to essentials or you move to server, now you're having to pay for something. None of us really want to give up what we were getting before in support size. So you can't say, well, it, you, we don't have to support exchange, so we're going to drop your price by, what, 30%? So it, it's a lose-lose when you look at it from that respect. I think mm -hmm. after the bloom, after the, the aura dies down and people forget what it was like before, mm -hmm. you're going to see more. But I think the people that were totally invested in SPS, it's going to take several years. A absolutely. Absolutely. So we got about 15 minutes. We'll run a few minutes over because my bad. I'm kind of getting the, the pictures in order. So we've got about 15 minutes if we want to kind of continue that motion. Yeah, I, I definitely I definitely want to talk to him, um, <laughs> Joe. Uh, who, 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 who wanted to talk first? Go, go ahead. But I, I do want to talk to you because you – go ahead. <laughs> Delivering microphone. Wow, that's intimidating. He is bringing it to you the whole time. Boy, you're smooth. You should be in sales. All right. First of all, tell the audience, Center for Computer, about 54 yeah. employees in Detroit. Yeah, CCR in Detroit. Um, we were at one time probably second or third in the country for installations of SBS 2003. Could do it in a night could do it hungover in a van in Indianapolis. Okay, uh, We did it in our sleep. Uh, we were in the same boat you guys were in when it started to go away. We changed our business model. We didn't do Office 365 or BPOS because it wasn't available to us. But what we ended up doing is getting rid of the servers, doing our hosting ourselves. And we, we've been selling Office in a subscription model for three or four years in SPLA. It's a little bit different, but we've, we've, we've hired 20 people since then. We've acquired two other companies. We are doing very well outside of SBS. It's not the end of the world, guys. There's, there's other ways to do it. We are doing it on our own. We're moving to Azure as soon as it's ready to accommodate the, the load that we have. And you guys are selling it wrong. You don't sell it as a line item. We never sell it as a line item. You get all our services for $125 a month, including your server, including your office, including your exchange. It's $125 a month plus with all help desk services and support per seat. Simple as that. And and who is your competition then that you're uh, selling um, against the in-house IT guy? You're saying you don't need the in-house IT guy and these resources at 125 a month. Do the math. Right, right. Okay. We get we get some pushback from that, but we can also cost justify uh, eliminating that position. That includes my managed services. That includes everything. Well, you know, there, there's always some a la carte, but I mean, if you want SQL, it's a little bit more because that, that, unfortunately, SQL is an expensive slot license. Mm -hmm. Twenty to fifty users. I don't think it's all that different than what you guys have. That's what we've traditionally done in the SBS world, mm -hmm. and we have two user clients on our cloud that pay us two hundred. Fifty dollars a month, and we we don't do a lot for them. But we are our own private cloud. Like I said, I don't want to do that anymore. It's pretty co it's it's pretty expensive. To uh, you know, we've got racks of servers and 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 sands and such. We've invested heavily, huh? I do have a yeah for, yeah exactly. But it's not something we want to maintain. It's not, it's not cost effective the way that Microsoft is making the pro, the the offering, the Office 365. Like I said, we walked away from 
WPC this year going, oh, there's not a single product that we could install anymore. <laughs> so, and that, that's, the, that's the, the name of the game. It's just you, 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 we're not fighting it anymore. Yes. SharePoint. We don't. We we've had so little interest in SharePoint. I mean, I, I contrary to Robert Crane, we just don't. We've never. We've always thought it was a great product. We don't have any in-house development, and we've had less than a handful of people show any interest at all in it. And we farm that out for the few, those few people. So the interesting thing is, there's some of us. I mean, I know my company. We did our Cloud Five Pack starting like six years ago, and several of you I've talked to have put together your bundle, whether it's through Intermedia, Rackspace, uh, when you want to try doing something with GoDaddy, where you've got the hosted product, you've got the, the hosted storage, hosted exchange, um, bundle it with managed services. There's a way for you to create a SKU that I can't compete against because I sell a different bundle than you sell. And so, you know, if clients can only get it one place, and that's you, and then the, the question is about the service, and, the, and all of that other stuff goes away, you know. I mean, it really is time to stop being emotionally invested in a product that hasn't <laughs> been sold in a year, you know. So I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'll be better in a year. I think we should have all therapists here next year. So help, help people get over it. Carl, go ahead. Harry, I think I remember you saying that Microsoft says that piracy is going to be eliminated in 25 years. No, the, I said that. I wrote that. Blog. Okay, you wrote that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I made that up. But <laughs> okay, <laughs> I I think it is. I mean, it's a it is a change in mindset, and it is going to take time, definitely. Yeah, I think I think there's a conspiracy, um, and I think I articulated in the blog. I think the reason they developed 365 was to eliminate piracy, with the service model when your cards rejected, you don't play because their revenue would double overnight if they eliminated piracy. They don't even need net new. If they just eliminated piracy, they'd do that. The other conspiracy was getting the best minds in the world to work for free, the MVPs. <laughs> <laughs> I want an MVP program. I, I, I want five MVPs to come work for me. <laughs> there, there, there's a, a unnamed group of people at Microsoft that have frequently referred to China as a one CD country. <laughs> There's there's one copy of Office in China, right? <laughs> and it just gets duplicated again and again. So, so anyway, you heard it here first, but but I do I do think it's going to change the dynamics of piracy. Yeah, Mark, um, get you the. It's Mark, right? You're out of Portland. Close. Okay. Hey, uh, my name is Matt. And I have a question. Yeah. Um, we don't have any trouble converting existing customers to 365 who know and trust us. But I want to ask how people are getting new leads and new customers, and if they're leading with 365 or leading with other services. Boy, that was the guy to ask who just popped in. Oh. The uh, what, what booth? Right. Is he the uh, insight? Uh, uh, in, 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 into IT marketing? Yeah, yeah. The, the booth three down from us is the lead guy, <laughs> the lead gen guy. Um, I, you know, I'll tell you, uh, I wish we had Pat Murphy here, who I've worked with and Skykick's worked with. He's like Mr. Lead Gen. Um, I, I mean, I can offer an opinion about Lead Gen and lead scoring and, and content to acquire leads and all that. Is anybody doing Can someone speak better than I can about that? I, I know the mechanics of it. We do a little of it. Is anyone doing Lead Gen uh, activities uh, with the engines out there? Yeah, that's it. Intuitive. Yeah, he just popped in. He, I, I mean, we should have grabbed him. Yeah, intuitive. No, that's what he does. That's what he does if you want to go by the booth. But I'd be curious to, from the, yeah, yeah, go, uh, if we could get the mic over here. Well, what I'm talking about is the, the lead gym programs I've seen has got a couple minutes um, that you have some way to attract the, uh, the, the, the bees to the flower, right? So you have content or, or downloads or giveaways or something. And then once you do it, you somehow acquire information about that person who visited your site, like they download the white paper, and they tell you a little bit about their industry, and then you lead score, and you say, we know that this profile works, right? This person fits this profile, and they close 60% of the time. And then you pursue that lead. You score the lead and go after the, the A's and the B's. That's 
what I'm aware of in lead gen is right. and a lot of, you're a lot of nurture the, marketing, right? Yeah. So you, you, you live here. Yeah. So a lot of the things that like Microsoft has acquired, like the marketing pilot or any of the ones that you see like Marketo or Pardot, um, they do what you're talking about. So you basically just decide what matters to you the most. If someone watches a video, if someone downloads a white paper, you just assign that a score. And as you keep doing your email marketing, so you know, inbound is generated from good outbound. That's how you get inbound. Um, and it's just like you described, you know, Harry, you basically assign a number to what you want them to do. And if they download the white paper, if they download the video, you, you give it a one, you give it a two, you give it a three. And then you basically just say, you know, I'm not going to have telemarketing call until they do these three things, until they travel down the path. And that's really what the trigger-based marketing that the Marketos and the Pardots and everything do. And it just makes it so that you're not taking a list and having sales smile and dial. You're just making sure that, you know, someone shows three areas of interest before you go and you make the phone call. And that, that, that's really all the scoring is. You can get pretty elaborate at it, but it just lets them self-qualify if you have them do a little bit more online. And, and I know we're, we're, we're going to talk in the fourth quarter to see if we can come up with ideas to, to help the SMB Nation crowd a little bit. So we have some further talks ahead of us. Thank you, Carl. I know you have to, go. to, I know you have to run. Um, let me ask you a different question. Is that with this audience, and again, we're uh, at the end of the day more of the S than the, the M of, of SMB. Um, what ways might you think of that they could uh, attract uh, leads from, from customers? Because not everybody's an analyst, blogger, writer, that kind of thing. What would a contest, um, what, what, have, what have you seen? You know, and another thing that... Uh, Shotgun advertising? Yeah, and the, the, <laughs> you know, the session that, that Melanie did, the, the Chambers of Commerce, um, I mean, when you look at the, the type of people that join the things like the Chambers of Commerce and everything, they're right in our SMB wheelhouse. Uh, they're, they're the right type of people. They, they, they read those newsletters. They're opted in. They're the conduit. So, you know, if we download a list, nobody knows who we are, we send an email, chances are they're not going to read it. If someone is, if you're a part of a sponsorship of your Chamber of Commerce, if you're doing something like the Microsoft Community Connections, that's a great way, you know, to get people to then go opt in, and then hopefully what they'll do is they'll go look at your website, they'll opt in. So, you know, something like the Microsoft Community Connections worked very well because, you know, in the Chambers of Commerce, quite frankly, there aren't people that are in enterprise and mid-tier companies. It's mostly SMB, and like you just said, it's mostly the S of the SMB. So that works really well. That's why that program has been so successful. Anyone who's getting a message out there, so, you know, what, what we do kind of on a one-to-one -one basis is, and it's similar to the Microsoft Community Connections, is, is there are all these associations that are associated with maybe verticals that, that mm -hmm. some of the folks in this room are, are very good at. Sometimes you get into a vertical by accident because the three local dentist offices, you know, happen to be who your implementations were, and then voila, you're in that vertical. Well, there's, you know, there's associations of dentists. There's, there's all these associations a lot of times they won't let you take the list and buy it and market to it yourself, but a lot of times you can get a message through them, you know, out to those. So I, I think that the, some of the things that the MCC is doing with Microsoft and some of the things you can do on your own that are similar going after these associations are a great way to drive traffic to your website. Is that the type of thing you were looking for? Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. So we're, we're almost at time. Um, I, I, I appreciate the, uh, the interaction. A couple of, thank you. And uh, you'll, you'll be out on the trade show floor having a, having a beverage if people want to kind of walk up and chat with you. Or... <laughs> well, I, hey, I get Prince Harry. That's all I have to say. Okay, I'm Prince Harry. If you're the princess, I'm Prince Harry. Um, you are. You are. There's there's something there. Uh, I have a, your example of the laundry mats in a second, but um, you brought up a good point. One of the best uh, vertical motions I saw worldwide um, from my travels in the last year was actually on the XP migration tour, and it was a gentleman in Denver, Colorado, who niched on veterinarians. 
and, and that's all he does. So it's a veterinarian. It's targeted, uh, builds the relationship, went through the trade association. They said, why veterinarians? And he said, it's, it's health care without humans. I mean, what humans spend on their dogs, right? It's the same motion as the medical profession with, without HIPAA, without humans. And, and it's emotional, <laughs> and people, what they spend on dogs and cats is amazing, and it's cash. Um, and uh, so we'll, we'll end with you. Uh, where's the mic, Carrie? Um, or, well, okay, quickly, and then I, I want to talk about your experiment, uh, which, which I applaud. <laughs> so for the most important announcement this afternoon, it was Stanford 20 and Washington 13. Oh. Go Cardinal. Oh, okay, so we go to three to one. Three and one, okay. We're not four, no. Ah, ah, ah. So, Carrie, take us out with, uh, you know, I think it's just valuable to know you tried. I tried. Um, Carrie Sanders, CMS Consulting, Kick Harbor. Yeah, we, uh, a friend of mine had this idea of advertising on the uh, uh, hangers, or it's the cover that goes over the hangers when you do your dry cleaning. And so he was selling the space on there and, you know, maybe fit 20 business guys, uh, size cards. And so I did that and it was a, you know, $550 investment for 40,000, 50,000 covers. And we thought it was great for realtors, doctors, dentists, they all get their stuff dry cleaned. Uh, it's been a year and a half now and not a call. But it was a good idea. It was a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And it was reasonable for the amount of coverage. So, Yeah, everybody who hears it says, that's a great idea. Anybody know what Johnny boards are? Johnny boards sit above urinals. I had a guy for five years that wanted me to advertise there. It's really hard to visualize what the message would be. <laughs> <laughs> but All right, well, I'm here at the clapping over at Robert Crane. So in any event, thank you so much for attending. Uh, we'll pick it back up tomorrow with Carl's advisory committee. Uh, very specific examples. Thank you. And then we have a capstone course later on. Um, the trade show hall, there's uh, a lot of adult beverages. Um